Mamba's chasing ducks there. Good job, Mamba. So this is how we start caching training. Uh, first thing we do is we go to a place where there are no other you know, appropriate hiding places. Somewhere kind of in the open like this. Um, and the goal is to encourage her to take the rat back to the box. Now, if there's somewhere even more appealing to hide the rat, she's likely to want to take it there. So we're gonna eliminate any temptations um, by taking her somewhere where it's just open and the only reasonable spot to take the rat is right here in the caching box. Before we teach her to do any of that, however, we're going to teach her to go to the box on command. So um, when I'm calling her, as you saw in the, the last video, I just give one toot shh, and uh, that means, you know, come to me. I'm going to give another whistle that means go to the box and um, I've already trained her to do this so she knows full well what the whistle means and the difference between the two different whistles. So I'll show you guys how, how we do that. So we just take a piece of meat, we're going to put it down in the caching box and then if I can get her to walk away for a second here, I'll show you. I give that whistle and uh, she knows that means go into the caching box there's a piece of food waiting for you so she's already been taught that the next step is to teach her to take the rat to the caching box so we got a dead rat here have it tied to a string and one thing you want to do is when you start this she needs to already know where the caching box is don't just put the box down and throw her down and have her not already go in it a couple times. So she knows right where the box is. She just came out of it, obviously. So she's ready to go for the, for the, the caching the rat. Come on, take it in there. So I'm pulling it a little bit away from the box to make her possessive so she wants to hide it. There we go. So now we make sure that we give her a big enough chunk of meat that she's not tempted to eat the rat. Um, if she uh, doesn't get enough meat, then she's going to start chewing on the rat, which is a bad habit. So once she's been eating for a little bit here, we're going to actually try and steal the rat if we can. So what I'll do, I want to make sure I, I take the rat without her feeling like I'm taking the rat. Like I don't want her to feel robbed. Um, so what I'm going to do so I'm going to reach in there, and I should have put the meat over the rat already, but I didn't. I put it in front of the rat. So that's kind of problematic, right? If I'm going to try and pull the rat out, the meat's in the way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reach in there, carefully take the meat. I'm going to roll it over the rat, like I should have done in the first place. I'm going to carefully, making sure she doesn't feel nervous, pull the rat out. Now I'm doing, being very careful as I do this. I do not want her to feel robbed. If she gets anxious at all, starts grabbing the rat, I'm just going to stop and leave the rat in there. The reason I'm pulling it out now is she's had a bad habit of chewing off the feet and tail, which I don't want her to get in the habit of chewing on the rat because then when she's down in a hole, she's just going to chew on the rat there. She didn't need to bring it back and eat food. She's already got food. So I was able to pull this out very carefully and I could tell, I could feel as my hand was in there, she wasn't grabbing the rat or feeling stressed or stiffening up. She was relaxed and eating and calm. So as long as she's relaxed and eating and calm and content, I'm fine. But the minute she starts stiffening up or squeaking 
or grabbing the rat, I'm making her feel uncomfortable. Which if you do that inside the box, what reason does she have to bring it back to the box if it's the place I just steal her stuff, right? But if she's comfortably eating, then she's obviously not very concerned about the rat being stolen. She's just happily eating her meal. So I just want to make sure she feels safe in the box. I don't want to do anything that makes her feel like uh, the box might be a, a place where she would lose something. I want the, set, the box be the only safe place to take the food or take the kill where she'll get fed food for doing so. Anywhere where anywhere else needs to be not safe place to take the food. So anyway, she did pretty good. Took a little bit of coaxing, but she took it in the box. So today we're going to do some caching training with Mamba. Now this is a pretty much every mink I get I do a little bit different. <laughs> I learn new things, I experiment with new things. Sometimes it's absolutely necessary because the mink I'm working with doesn't like the previous method I used for training. So I'm always changing things. Sometimes the, the change is just because I came up with something new and be, sometimes it's because the mink isn't responding to the method I, I used to use. So this time it's really just me coming up with new stuff. So I usually, as you just saw, do caching training with a dead rat. I experimented just a couple days ago with using a crawdad instead. So we'll see if it goes just as good today. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do, first thing I'm gonna do is put this caching box in a really easy place for the meat to see it. I don't want her to get confused and not know the box is there or forget yeah. where it's at. Thank you, sweetheart. Can I use the fishing pole? Thank you. Okay, next, so I'm gonna get a crawdad. Make sure that you're following the fishing laws in your given area. So every area has different fishing laws and sometimes they can can be quite random. You're like, what? How is that illegal? Why is that a law? But make sure you know the laws. So in my state, you cannot remove a live crayfish from the body of water that you captured it at. So this crawdad was captured here. Um, I'm making sure that I'm following the, the laws within my state as best of my to the best of my ability. So anyway, just a little plug. Make sure you're doing legal stuff. So this crawdad captured here at the lake, totally legal. I've taken little, my girl's little hair ties, little rubber bands, and just like the lobsters at the, pet, at the grocery store, I've got them uh, closed off so she's not gonna pinch my baby mink. Uh, baby mink are pretty sensitive. I don't want a chance that she has a bad experience. Then I took a fishing line and I, I tied it on there in such a way that this loose isn't gonna loosen very easily can be loosened and tightened but if you tell you can see it doesn't loosen itself Mamba's chasing ducks there good job Mamba you chasing ducks good girl good girl chase those ducks good me I then tie a little noose in the string and then I take one of these little clips, swivels, and I clip it right on. So I've got the new, the clip swivel hooked to the line. So now I've got a perfect little uh, training device for my meat. So what we're going to do, she's obviously having a good time out here chasing the ducks. I'm gonna get her to come over here. Oh, she's in this grass. Okay, so what... Oh. 
Olive thinks she caught something. Look at that. Good job, Olive. You caught that. Yeah, you caught a crayfish. Good job. Okay, put it back in the water. Let it breathe. Good job. Fishy. <laughs> Oh, good job! <laughs> oh, yeah, good job, you caught it. Okay, put it down in the water so it can read. So, one thing you'll notice about this area, there are no reeds or holes. <laughs> there are no reeds or holes or other hiding places for the mink to take the crawdad to. Okay, so I take a piece of meat, got it in my hand ready to go. So the minute she puts it in the box, I could give her her reward. Now, sweetheart, can I have the bowl? Please. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you're fine. Look, look, it's Mamba's turn. Here, 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 here. It's Mamba's turn. Look. Here, 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 here. <laughs> so just like when we're out fishing, if you've seen me fishing with Fang, I want her to learn that when I say here, 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 and throw a pebble, that that's where the, the crawdad is. So we're trying to help her understand that concept. Here, 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 here. Mamba. Come on. Now she took it up in the weeds, so I'm gonna take it from her. As soon as she can get a chance, I'm gonna steal it from her. Oh, she put it in the box, so I let her keep it. Mamba! Mamba! Oh, no, somebody else. Mamba! So I snuck it out while she was eating, as carefully as I could. And we'll give her a repeat here. <laughs> there we go. Good girl. Wrong place. We snatched it. She needs to take it right in the box, not near the box, in the box. I'm going to let her look for it. So while she's searching like that, I'm not going to call her or tell her anything. I'm just going to let her search for it. She needs to realize that if she's not in the box, it's not safe. <laughs> And I made her chase it a little bit there. You saw I kind of pulled it out. Same thing, we're gonna steal it. So I've got a bunch of meat ready this time so I can feed her up because she's had a couple times stealing it from her. Olive stop. There we go. Nope. Nope. Good girl. I was trying to steal it and it came off. So she put it in the box, she gets her reward, and since we stole it a couple times, she was getting kind of frustrated. I'm just gonna feed her up. If she was doing well, I would have let her do a couple more repetitions. But since she was really struggling, I want her to get really rewarded very well for doing it right.
In our next episode, we're going to take Mamba on her very first kangaroo rat hunt. Will Mamba be mature enough to catch these quick little desert rodents? Find out next time on Black Mamba Born to Hunt. <laughs>